So this may come as uh, very much of a surprise to you. So, well, one reason is because you may be using other operating systems. But in Linux and Unix, everything is a file. If something is not a file, it is a process. And most files are just files called regular files. They contain normal data such as text files, executable files and programs, input for and output from a program, and so on. There are some exceptions to this rule. There are directories, which are files that are lists of other files. Yes, directories in Linux are files. There's some special files, which is a mechanism used for input and output. Most special files are in the dev directory. We're going to talk about these later. Links, which, are, which is a system of making a file or a directory visible in multiple parts of the system's file system. So here's the thing. File system uh, manipulation and management is a pretty big piece of the equation. And before I get into this whole files business and where the files are located inside of the Linux structure, I want to actually brief you on the way things have been historically. Files have been placed all over the system. And if you haven't been familiar with Unix systems and Linux systems, You've been familiar with Windows, perhaps, uh, or Macs. Now, in Windows, everything is not just a file. Windows file system handles things differently. It's very different, as a matter of fact. There's some other things I want to point out to you in the way things have taken place over the course of time. It wasn't that long ago. Maybe that's a relative term, huh? It wasn't that long ago that you were able to pinpoint, or a network administrator, or a user was able to pinpoint where the file is located, on which disk, whether it's local or remote. Well, not too long ago, there were no remote disks. Everything was local. The only remote disk that we dealt with were remote disks that were, well, on our networking file server. And on that file server, there was local storage. And on that local storage was basically where all of the files were. That's really not the case today. We are dealing with national and international and very widely spread organizations. And I'm not talking about organizations that are large in the number of people they have, but organizations that have a lot of users coming in via the web, if you will. And they want to keep their web servers and their file servers so that their web servers can gain access to them or their database servers closest to the web server. If I have, uh, for example, let's say that I have a company located in California. And I have a user community on the web that comes in from all over the United States. Well, maybe they're coming from all over the world. It doesn't have to be the United States. Maybe the users are coming in from all over the world. It would be in my best interest for the, uh, for the sole reason of allowing for the fastest possible performance to place my web servers and my application servers and my file servers closest to the users. Isn't that true? So now I have uh, a set of, let's say that my organization sells books. I'm going to be very, very simple. My inventory of books and uh, you know, where my inventory is kept is supposed to be on some database. Now this database needs to be replicated or copied, or synchronized across every location where my database server exists. If my company is headquartered in California, but I have users from all over the globe, I want to make certain that someone gaining access to my bookstore from, let's say, Tokyo, is able to access a Tokyo-based uh, file system, and is able to access a web server located in Tokyo. That way, the user can experience the fastest throughput and the fastest performance. Makes sense, right? But in California is where all of my inventory is and my major databases. 
I would have to synchronize that database across the globe, maybe nightly, maybe several times a day, to make certain that all of my file servers and all of my data ser database servers and the files within them are synchronized. So that each day, or perhaps several times a day, all of those databases contain the same exact piece of information. If, I, if a book has been sold, um, let's say I have five copies of a book, whatever book it is. If I have five copies of a book, and that book has been sold, I don't know, seven times, then I have oversold two books. Make sense? I have to account for that as someone selling. Because I make a promise as a um, organization or as a bookstore, I make a promise to my customers on when those books would be delivered. If I am not able to keep all of my databases and files in sync across the globe, then my counts, my on-hand counts are going to be off. I'm going to be making promises to my clients or my customers. I'm going to be making promises that I will deliver the books to them and I'm going to be making promises that I can't keep because I will have oversold the books. I'm just giving you one example. Now this doesn't have to be a bookstore example. This can be files that are internal. Let me give you another example associated with this. Let's say that I'm a traveling salesperson or I'm a traveling executive or I'm a sales manager or I'm a director of a, of a group and I have to travel from city to city, state to state, country to country, gaining access to my data. So if I want to access my files and my documents, if I go from Chicago to Toronto to Tokyo to Australia, maybe I am traveling the globe, right? Many people and many organizations do. So if I am in Australia and normally my main branch or my organization is in the US and if I'm in Australia, do you think it's wise for me to connect to a, uh, to connect to a central computer located in the US and retrieve my file from the US? Maybe once because I have to, but from that point forward it would be best if those files are located local to me because that round trip that is located in that, that round trip going from Australia to the US and back takes time. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that this whole file system and file system management has become more and more complex as times have progressed. I can be on my laptop, I can be on my local desktop machine, and I can also be on a tablet or a phone. I should be able to access what I want, when I want, very quickly. And I don't want to wait, maybe because I can't wait. So file system management is something that is um, getting complex, and it has been getting complex over time from the perspective of the administrator. And it's been getting easier and easier to access the stuff around the globe from the perspective of the user. That's the way things should be. Should be easy for the user, and as a result of making it easy for the user, it makes it hard for the administrator.